Jackson keeps it again, trying to stretch to the edge. What a hurl by Jackson! Highlight reel touchdown! 32nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Lamar Jackson. Oh, wow! 11 yards. He's going for much more than that. On first down, he pulls it. It looked like he was handing it off, and Lamar Jackson pulled it and took off. Are you kidding me with this guy? Slows up for so congratulations to this year's most valuable player, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Demetrius Jackson Jr. was born on January 7th, 1997 in Pompano Beach, Florida. Unfortunately, Lamar lost his father and grandmother on the same day when he was only 8 years old, so he was primarily raised by his mother, Felisa Jones, for the rest of his life. Now, growing up, believe it or not, Lamar wasn't into sports. His mother signed him up to play Pop Warner football just to give him something to do, and almost immediately, he excelled. His mother knew Lamar was special and got him a local quarterbacks coach to help him out, named Van Peanut Warren. Now, Peanut isn't actually his middle name, it's just his nickname. They then began working on a weekly basis while his mother was watching on the sidelines and studying the drills Warren was putting Lamar through. Then she would replicate the same drills at home for Lamar to practice and to get better. Felicia would also put on a full gear and would try and tackle Lamar during the drills. I think it's clear to say that his mother was just as dedicated to her son and was a big part of pushing Lamar to be the best. Moving on to high school, Lamar attended Santa Luz's Community High School for his first two years. His freshman year, he was inconsistent at playing and only showed up when he wanted to, and his sophomore year, he actually sat out. Lamar then transferred to Boydson Beach Community High School for his last two years. In his first year as a starter, Lamar would throw for 1,264 yards, 19 touchdowns with only 6 interceptions, and would rush for 960 yards for 10 touchdowns. Nothing spectacular in terms of high school quarterback play. I mean, 2,000 total yards, 29 touchdowns, that's pretty normal for your high school quarterback. However, his senior year, he posed slightly less numbers. He would throw for only 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns to 3 interceptions, and would only rush for 660 yards with 12 touchdowns. Now, at this point in Lamar's high school career, he was wild for his ability to run the football. And a lot of college coaches wanted to convert Lamar to either a running back or a wide receiver. Now, this is pretty normal for high school athletes when they have this kind of talent, but Lamar was dedicated to play quarterback, quarterback only. By the end of his senior year, he racked up 19 total scholarship offers. Out of those 19, he would only take five visits. Louisville, Florida, Mississippi State, Nebraska, and Miami. Lamar would eventually commit to Louisville, but almost decommitted to attend Florida after a last second visit, but went with Louisville mainly because the Louisville head coach, Bobby Petrino, promised Lamar Jackson's mother that he would play quarterback and nothing else. Now, let's move on to Lamar's freshman year at Louisville. Going into college, Lamar was actually one of six total quarterbacks on the depth charts, and Lamar was the only freshman on that list. As a true freshman, Lamar would play most of the season as a starter, but there was a quarterback duel slash battle going on throughout the whole season. Now, I don't know if that's the right term to use, but there were a lot of games during the season where the coach would split the refs between both quarterbacks during the game. Now, this isn't abnormal in college because there are a lot of teams that do run a two quarterback system and have a running quarterback and then a pocket passing quarterback, and you put them in for each of their strengths. Out of all 13 games Louisville played in the 2015 season, Lamar would appear in every single game but one due to an ankle injury. Lamar started eight games as quarterback and would get subbed in for read option plays. One example of Lamar not starting and getting subbed in was against Kentucky. Louisville was down 21-0 with Kyle Boylan in at quarterback who threw two interceptions on five pass attempts. Boylan was benched for Lamar and would lead an incredible comeback. Lamar would score three touchdowns with 316 total yards and would outscore Kentucky 38-3 the rest of the game. This just goes to show you how good Lamar was even as a true freshman. To get thrown into a game down 21-0 and to score 38 unanswered points is just absolutely amazing. Lamar would finish his freshman season with 1,800 passing yards, 12 touchdowns to only 8 interceptions, with 960 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. So overall, not a bad season for a true freshman who was getting thrown in and out of the lineup. Going into his sophomore season, Lamar was named the starter with no worry about losing his job, getting subbed out during games, or splitting reps. In his first game as a starter this season, Lamar would score 8 touchdowns. 
in the first half. Yes, you heard that right. Lamar would score eight touchdowns in the first half alone, setting a school record. Then the very next game against Syracuse, Lamar would score five total touchdowns with 600 yards of offense by himself. Lamar would also score four or more touchdowns in eight out of 13 games. Lamar had the most rushing yards for 11 out of 13 games. So he was getting more rushing yards than the running backs themselves. Lamar would have a spectacular season, finishing the season with 3,500 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, nine interceptions, along with 1,500 rushing yards and 21 rushing touchdowns. So 51 total touchdowns and 5,000 total yards as your first year as being a starter, I would say that's pretty good. Lamar would also win the Heisman and would be the youngest player to do so at the age of 19 years old. Lamar would finish his sophomore season with a ton more media attention than he did coming into the season. Moving on to his junior year, Lamar was poised to have a great year just as he did the year before. Lamar would finish the season averaging 281 passing yards and 123 rushing yards per game. By himself, he was averaging over 400 yards per game. That's insane. He would finish the season with 3,600 passing yards, 27 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, along with 1,600 rushing yards and 18 rushing touchdowns. Lamar would win the ACC Athlete of the Year award and he would finish third in Heisman finalist voting, losing to Baker Mayfield. So in only two full seasons as a starter, Lamar would finish with 96 total touchdowns with only 19 interceptions. Now that is a 5 to 1 touchdown interception ratio which is absolutely incredible. Following his junior season, he would eventually declare for the 2018 NFL Draft. Now leading up to the draft, there was a lot of talk about Lamar switching positions to wide receiver or running back once he got to the NFL. The main topic was about him being a pocket passer in the NFL and how he would adjust since he heavily relied on his run game to get him success. The NFL isn't very nice to run first quarterbacks, but Lamar was determined to stay at Quarterback. During the NFL Combine, he declined to run the 40-yard dash in order to focus on passing drills. But we know the main reason he didn't was because if he ran a sub 4-3, which he could have, then there would have been more light shine on the fact that he could play another position other than quarterback. Now, this quarterback draft class was stacked. We had Baker Mayfield, who just won the Heisman, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, of course, Mason Rudolph, and the greatest quarterback of all time, Mike White. So where does this leave Lamar Jackson? First, let's take a look at the team that would eventually draft him, the Baltimore Ravens. Since winning the Super Bowl in 2012, the Ravens have only made it to the playoffs once in the last five seasons. Joe Flacco was just coming off a pretty below average season and has been slowly declining ever since their Super Bowl run. In my opinion, Flacco was never even a good quarterback, but he was a good game manager. That was just his role. He was good at slowing down the game and making one to two good plays per game. That's all you needed from him. His defense was always there for him and could win games by themselves. In his 10 full seasons as a starter in the NFL, Flacco averaged 20 passing touchdowns and 13 interceptions per game, which really isn't good at all. And Flacco Flacco was coming off a not so great season, they missed the playoffs again and Flacco had just thrown for 18 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. Just for comparison, Josh McCown, the NFL journeyman who was on his 7th different NFL team and who played 3 less games than Joe Flacco on the New York Jets had the same numbers. A lot of the media said that the Ravens needed offensive linemen, receivers and linebackers. Hardly any mock drafts were talking about a quarterback, but this is what happens on draft night. The Cleveland Browns select Baker Mayfield. Wow. The New York Jets select Sam Darnold. The Buffalo Bills select Josh Allen. The Arizona Cardinals select Josh Rosen. With the 32nd pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Lamar Jackson. Wow. Now, four quarterbacks were taken ahead of Lamar, and you can see how upset he was, but he used this as motivation, and let's move on to his rookie year in the NFL. Going into Lamar's rookie year, he was the backup to Joe Flacco and had actually beat out RG3 in the offseason after the Ravens signed RG3 about three weeks before drafting Lamar. Now, Lamar actually got his first NFL action week one in the NFL when the Ravens were up on the Bills by 44 points, so Lamar got to go in and play as the game was ending. The next time Lamar would see the field was week seven when he came in as a Wildcat quarterback and ran it in for his first NFL touchdown. Then week eight, Lamar would get thrown in when the game was already over. And now 
thought things would begin to change. The Ravens were coming off a bye week, and Joe Flacco had injured his hip, so Lamar Jackson got his first start in the NFL against the Cincinnati Bengals. And in his first game as the starter, he would break the franchise rushing record by a quarterback with 117 yards. He would lead the Ravens to a 24-21 victory and was named the starter for the rest of the season. Lamar would finish the season 6-1 as a starter for the remainder of the season, and his only loss? Well, that was to Patrick Mahomes, where they lost by 3 points in overtime. The Ravens would then face the Los Angeles Chargers in the wild card round where Lamar Jackson would become the youngest quarterback to start a playoff game in the NFL at 21 years old. But this game was horrible from the start for Lamar. By the end of the first half, the Ravens were down 12-0 and Lamar was 2 for 8 passing for only 17 yards and he had 31 rushing yards. Unfortunately, Lamar didn't get going until it was too late and the Ravens were down 20 with 9 minutes remaining and would eventually score 2 touchdowns but Lamar would get strip sacked with 20 seconds remaining and that would end the game. Lamar finished 14 of 19 with 194 yards, 2 touchdowns, 1 interception and 3 total fumbles with only 1 lost fumble. Now even though Lamar did play horrible in his first playoff start, he was only a rookie and had plenty of flashes of greatness his rookie season. However, questions arose in the media regarding Lamar being able to be a passing quarterback in the NFL. Especially after his horrific performance against the Chargers, everyone doubted his ability to throw the ball in the NFL and his next season however well you're just gonna have to watch empty backfield for Lamar Jackson they need 11 yards he's going for much more than that Jackson out of the pocket Jackson trying to run for it Jackson avoids spins he's in touchdown for the Ravens Jackson throwing over the middle touchdown Jackson is running every time out of this formation. He does it again. He makes a great move. Congratulations to this year's most valuable player, Lamar Jackson. At least to say Lamar Jackson would have a spectacular season. Lamar would finish his first year as a starter in the NFL, leading the Ravens to a 14-2 record. With 3,100 passing yards, 36 passing touchdowns, so only 6 interceptions, to also add on 1,200 rushing yards and 7 rushing touchdowns. Lamar would also break 6 NFL records this season. He became the first player in NFL history to pass for more than 250 yards and rush for 120 yards in one game. The first player in NFL history to pass for more than 200 yards and rush for 150 yards in a regular season game, the second player in NFL history to have two perfect passer ratings in the same season, the first quarterback in NFL history to rush for more than 60 yards in seven consecutive games, the first player to throw five touchdowns in a Monday night football debut, and the youngest player with multiple five passing touchdown passing games in NFL history. And that's not even including the fact that he won league MVP and he was the second player in NFL history to win the MVP unanimously and the second young Youngest player to win the MVP award. Now that was a mouthful, but moving on, the Ravens would get a bye round and then would face the Tennessee Titans in the divisional round. Now this game had a lot of question marks. For starters, Lamar Jackson had a total of 508 yards, 365 passing yards, one touchdown with two interceptions, and 143 rushing yards with one lost fumble. So Lamar had one touchdown to three turnovers, which isn't too great. Now, on the other side of the field, you had Derrick Henry, who ran for 195 yards and threw, yes, threw for one touchdown. Now, even though Lamar didn't play well in terms of protecting the football, this loss wasn't his fault. In my opinion, this loss goes on the coaching staff. You have Lamar Jackson, who can run the football like there's no tomorrow, and you made him throw the ball 59 times. I don't quite understand that. Additionally, the offensive line didn't play great, and there was a good amount of drop passes from the Ravens receivers. So I wouldn't mark this loss on Lamar totally, but there is definitely some blame to go around. And that would end his first full season in the NFL and it didn't disappoint at all. But yet again, another question arose after Lamar's performance. Can Lamar Jackson win a playoff game? Now let's move on to his next season in the NFL. Lamar's third year in the league was special. He would lead the Ravens to an 11-5 record and two out of the three losses that he played in were one possession games. Lamar would miss week 12 after testing positive to COVID-19, but would come back a week later to completely destroy the Dallas Cowboys 34-17 after not practicing for a whole week. 
Anyways, Lamar Jackson would finish the season with 2,700 passing yards, 26 touchdowns to only 9 interceptions, to add on 1,000 rushing yards and 7 rushing touchdowns. The Ravens would once again face the Tennessee Titans in the playoffs for a matchup in the wildcard round. Coming into this game, a lot of the media talk was, if Lamar doesn't win this game, he's done. I didn't think he would be done per se, but there definitely would have been some serious question marks about him being a quarterback who can win playoff games. If he's going to start his career 0-3 in the playoffs, then is he just a regular season quarterback? There were so many questions surrounding Lamar leading up to this game, and the pressure was there. However, Lamar would prove everyone wrong during this game and would finally get his first playoff win. The play callers for Baltimore definitely learned from their mistake last year and utilized Lamar to his strengths of running the football. Lamar played efficiently, throwing for 179 yards, 17 of 24, while also rushing for 136 yards and a touchdown. It also helped that the Baltimore defense held Derrick Henry to 40 yards rushing. Yeah, the guy who ran for 2,000 yards in the regular season, one of eight players in NFL history to do so, yeah, well that guy was held to 40 rushing yards in one game. Anyways, Lamar and the Ravens would get the win 20-13 and would move on to play the Buffalo Bills in the divisional round. Now, this game was closer than the score shows. Even though Lamar didn't play in the fourth quarter because of an injury, you could argue that if Lamar didn't get injured, they could have won this game and advanced to the AFC Championship game. The Ravens would lose 3-17, but Justin Tucker would miss two gimme field goals that would have made the game a lot closer. Then, late in the third quarter, when the score was only 10-3, Lamar would throw a pick six when they were in the red zone about to score so that would have tied up the game then on the last play in the third quarter right after the pick six lamar would suffer a concussion rolling him out for the rest of the game the baltimore defense would actually play great holding josh allen and the bills offensively to only 10 points but ultimately those missed field goals the pick six and the concussion would end the ravens and lamar jackson's season a month after the season ended the ravens exercised fifth year option for lamar's contract worth 23 million dollars for the 2022 season now it's just crazy to think that at this point Lamar is making so little. This upcoming season, his base salary is still only 1.7 million, but he does earn up to about $9 million with incentives. Moving on to the 2021 season, Lamar started off the season really strong. He would lead the Ravens to a 6-2 start and an incredible performance in week 5 against the Indianapolis Colts. The Ravens would go down 22-3 with 3 minutes remaining in the third quarter, but Lamar had other plans. He would lead a comeback and would flip the script and outscore the Colts 28-3 in the fourth quarter and overtime. Lamar finished the game with 442 passing yards with four touchdowns and 62 rushing yards, so over 500 total yards of offense. Then, however, after the Ravens would lose Week 10 to the Miami Dolphins on Thursday Night Football, things wouldn't be the same for Lamar for the rest of the season. He would miss Week 11 due to non-COVID illnesses. Week 12, he would throw four interceptions against the Browns, but eventually got the win. Week 13, the Ravens would lose to the Steelers at the end of the game by going for two and the win instead of kicking the PAT attempt. Finally, week 14, Lamar would suffer a grade two ankle sprain, ruling him out for the rest of the season. So Lamar's 2021 season was stopped short due to injuries, and you could argue it wasn't his best season due to turnovers, but stat-wise in less games, he had more passing yards than he did all last season. After all, before Lamar got injured, he had the Ravens at an eight and three record. And without him, they proceeded to lose six games in a row to end the season eight and nine. However, let's recap and talk about his stats, accomplishments, and what's to come in the future. In only four years in the NFL, Lamar Jackson has shown the world that he can be a successful quarterback. He has won league MVP, first team all pro, most rushing yards in a single season by a quarterback, most 1,000 rushing yard seasons by a quarterback, 9,900 pass yards with 84 touchdowns and 31 interceptions, along with 3,600 rushing yards and 21 touchdowns. The most wins as a starting quarterback under the age of 25 with 41 wins, and with a 98.1 one passer rating that ranks number eight all time. Yes, all time. The only reason he isn't on this list yet is because the requirement is 64 games played and Lamar has only played 58 games. So by next season, after six games, he'll be on that list for sure. Lamar Jackson is the best running quarterback of all time and his top 10 pass rating of all time. That's pretty good for a running back if you ask me. Anyways, Lamar Jackson is currently on his last year of his contract with the Ravens and I can only imagine why he's gonna get paid. The Ravens have yet to even begin negotiations with him, but that's not a good sign knowing how good Lamar is. If the Ravens wait too long to pull the trigger, they might be out on a franchise quarterback. Anyways, as far as Lamar's future holds, we're gonna have to wait to find out. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and I'll see y'all next video.